Okay, let's start this off by looking at a NZD USD monthly chart. And what's on the chart here is simply just a horizontal line, vertical line, 25, uh, simple moving average, and then uh, MACD down here that I use for uh, divergence. So let's start this out with just a simple, let's just touch on some basic simple thoughts about what we attempt to do and how we attempt to do it and how we attempt to approach it. And what is your definition, your personal definition of a trader? Is a trader someone who works off of a monthly chart in a 401k and he's a buy and a whole trader and he he's he's he 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 adds to his uh, portfolio and he keeps it for 20 30 years with a company and hopefully it does what generally things do long term in our in our United States stock markets uh, it ends up being a nice nest egg for him <clears throat> history has proven to be so but obviously there are times during those 20 or 30 years when we have uh, we have uh, corrections bear markets and 2008 would have been a great example where we had a whole group of people nearing retirement and they watched 50 percent of everything they had disappear uh, because it was uh, fear fear set in and they and they didn't know what else to do but sell but but of course what did they do they waited until it was half gone and they were afraid to sell the other half at that point because uh, they thought well maybe this is the bottom and the other half will return me back to where I was before and obviously yes that did end up happening didn't it and then some uh, but wasn't a fun experience for people was it now here we find ourselves in 2016 on what may very well possibly be the next big correction and a lot of people are saying that this could be one for the ages. We have been in a sustained bull market, uh, more so in a longer stretch of time than any, any time in our country's history. And just common sense tells you that, that there has to be a correction. So uh, right now, from that standpoint, there's just too many things pointing to uh, uh, be careful, especially if you're 50 plus and you're heavily exposed to the stock market uh, as a whole. Uh, just too many red flags. $20, $20 trillion in debt. Uh, a very, very small part of the sector uh, is holding the entire market up. Very few stocks. Maybe a, maybe a handful of 10 stocks, 10 large stocks, companies are holding this thing up all by itself. We could go into that in detail, into detail, in depth. We don't need to do that for this now. But just, just uh, you know, this, these are just facts that I'm, I'm saying to you. This is not something that, that I personally know and makes me some kind of inside knowledge or anything. Anybody can read and, and find the facts of this, that here we are in January of 2016 with some serious, serious trouble uh, with our country. Uh, the fundamentals uh, going forward, the technicals going forward, uh, and anybody, in my opinion, that is in their 50s, 60s, that's uh, playing around with it in a, a position of uh, 60, 70, 80 percent of their portfolio at risk uh, is is playing with fire at this point. So, me personally, um, I'm I'm in all cash. Me personally. Uh, well, is there a possibility I could end up regretting that? Sure, but I'm not going to sit around at 55 years old and watch everything that I work to, to, to build up. My, my wife uh, is a professional person, has her degree, has been at her job for many years, mostly for health insurance for our, our family, but her 401k uh, will not, I will not permit it to disintegrate over the next year or two, which I think there's a good chance may very well happen. So if I miss out and I, and I was wrong, then I miss out and I was wrong, but, but I'm not going to sit around every night and sweat it, and uh, I'm just not going to do that. So, all right, so 
we are looking at a monthly chart. Now, when you as a trader, when you come in wanting to think about trading and you're brand new to this and you, you see things, you learn things like leverage, you, 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 you become aware, some of the things you become aware of are, wow, if I could just learn to catch this, then just simple knowledge of leverage enables me to be able to work some mathematical calculations and let's do that together uh, with a calculator. Okay, stick with me here. You've got your calculator, right? Okay. Here we sit. Uh, let's assume we're sitting up here. It's uh, middle of 2014. The NZD USD is up here. It is uh, showing divergence. Notice the peak high here in MACD, the peak high here, and then notice how we have a, a higher high or an even, slightly higher high in price, and a lower divergence tick down here. Okay, so classic divergence. So what does that tell us? Does it tell us that market, the market's going down? Not necessarily. What we've taught and what we've learned over the years at the group is, is that we can't blindly do this. We can if we get good at, po at spotting uh, visual cues. Yes, you can get good at doing that if you are willing to take a really super wide stop and, and it work out a high percentage of the time. But what we've learned over the years with the group, if you've been with me, is that this is oftentimes a great uh, signal that something's coming and we may be at the start of a new trend but what we've learned is we have to use our understanding of support and resistance, our, our flips and price, and, uh, uh, price flips, pivot zones, and then our bar analysis to try to um, nail our entry point so that we are not left uh, just totally unaware of what to do and what's going to happen next. And, and that's what we learn to do. We learn how to to rifle shot our entries in a way that gets us in the trade and into profit quickly so that we can make a decision to take money or move our stop to break even, but not lose money. Okay, so people that come into this, they see this and they think, well, well, goodness, that's not hard. If, if, I, can, if I can just catch one of these, and let's just say they, they've, uh, they've reached a point where they understand the leverage, and, and let's just say for a second that they say to themselves, Okay, here is, uh, here's the 8150 area, and it's a break. And if, if I can get in right here, and let's say I can catch this whole move down to here for what? Uh, let's say 1,800 pips in how long? Roughly 10 months. Okay, so uh, let's actually count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, stick with me here. So September, let's see, it's November, December, and then the start of 2015. Okay, so we're we're the end of 2014, running into 2015 on this trend. Uh, this pretty good trend break. Now, let's assume for a second that we got in and we had a fifty thousand dollar account. And we saw this, and we were wise enough or smart enough or lucky enough to catch this. And let's say, and trust me, we're leading to something that's going to surprise you. So stick with me here. Let's say we had that $50,000 count and we risked 3%. So, and do this with me on your calculator on paper. So that's $1,500, okay? And so let's say that we had a general understanding of support and resistance, and we saw we saw these old bar lows here and price popped through and sure enough look what happened the next month it came back and it held didn't it let me zoom in so it came back and it, it came back here and it held right okay so so here you are you've uh, you've entered let's say um, with um, this fifteen hundred dollars and let's say that you have taken Oh, I don't want to say here exact what what would be what would be a a a, a decent pip uh, stop here. 
uh, if you're going to go above the 25, we're talking about 300 pips. That's not going to work, is it? I mean, it's really not. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to break this down into lower time frames. But, but what I'm trying to point out to you here is what happens to people that are new to this, to this game. And, and let me show you what happens to them. So they come in here, and they may have learned a little bit about support and resistance, and, and they decide to take a 100 pip stop, and they, and they nail this. They, it works for them. So $1,500 investment divided by their $100 um, uh, risk is $15 per pip. Now, let me ask you something. If you enter here and at $15 a pip, and you get down here at 260 pips, and you have a $4,000 profit from here to here, and that's almost $5,000 on your $50,000 account. So what is that? That's $4,000 divided by your $50,000 account. You've, you've just now, in one month, less than one month, you've just now had an 8% return on your account. Now, people will give away their arm. Uh, they will do, they will give away their, their, their firstborn child. They will do anything to see their accounts grow at 8% a year long term. I mean, that's something that if you can accomplish that, then you're, you're a, considered a great trader, right? Well, of course, everybody thinks that about people that have that, 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 that manage funds that eight percent a year consistently 10 20 years they're considered the best of the best okay so just you doing entering here with your knowledge of support and resistance and then also knowing that price is likely to get held up right here when it hits here then okay you've, you've gotten here with your your four thousand dollar profit now let me ask you something are you going to watch that do this the next month? and go back to zero. You, do, do you have the fortitude or the foreknowledge to do that? Do you have the ability to put a trend line in here in some way and, and hang in there with this thing while it moves sideways? Because what does price usually do? It usually does this, doesn't it? It usually goes sideways. But, but, but pay attention to what it's doing here. You think you're in there. You visually look at this as a new trader, and you look at this nice trend here, and you think, oh, that'll be easy to follow. Well, I want you to look again. What, what is price doing? Price is not going straight down. As a matter of fact, price is uh, uh, ruining your life mentally because it's going up and down and up and down, and your, your profit's going from, from great to nothing, from great to nothing. And then it pops through and it gets really good. Okay? It gets really good down here. Let's say you, you hang on down here to uh, uh, 750 pips. Well, what is that? 750 times 15, that's $11,250 divided by your 50,000. There's a 22% return right there, three or four months. Okay? Wow, so you sweated this out. Sweated this out. You got here now. Now, okay, you're in this big downturn, this big downtrend. Uh, you, you, you should. You, this, this was gravy when you first, when you looked at a chart and you saw that this, you could do this all day and make, make a killing. Well, okay, so here you are. Now, look what happens. You just lost half of it. Can, are you going to do that? Okay. Are you going to do that? Okay. Here it goes again. Okay. You got it back. Okay. Here it goes again. You lost it all. Okay. So now. Now look at the trend, the trend line. Okay, so this monthly, this monthly uh, uh, play here looks pretty easy, right? Okay, now let's look at it. See what it looks like on weekly. Okay, let's 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 make this. Let's give this truly what it is. Okay, now this look this looks like a this looks like an easy thing to 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 do, right? Well, I just showed you it's not, and it's a pretty darn good downtrend, isn't it? All right, but a lot of bar covering. Now let's look at it on a weekly. Let's say during the time that you're doing this, you look over at weekly. Okay, now what does it look like? Does it look like that straight trend now? What, what's going on here? 
you know, uh, are you, you're in this. Look, you're, 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 you've made all your money, you've lost it. You've made all your money, you've lost it. You made all your money, you lost it. You made, you lost, you made, you lost, you made, you lost. Now we're doing a weekly. And now it's getting more side to side. Okay? Now it's getting more mentally difficult. Okay? So, so if you had started off trading the weekly instead of the monthly, now what looked easy is not as easy, is it? Okay? Now let's, let's, do, let's look at uh, daily. Let's do the same thing on daily. Okay? What does this look like to you? Does this look easy? Does this look like a straight down market to you? Side to side, side to side. Okay, now look at this. Let's say, okay, well, Jim, I'll just wait for these dailies to do this. Okay, well, let's, look, let's take a closer look at that. What is this actually doing? Well, if, if, you, if, you, have the, if you have the wherewithal and you see this daily pin bar, you see that? Let's just say that you had you did nothing else and, and, and you saw this right here and you took it. Okay, and here we go. All right, so so you're in profit. It the bar traces back. Let's look closer. All right, so so here we go. Boom, you're in. Here we go. Can you can you do this? Can you can you mentally do this? Can you watch? This turn lose. Can you watch this win lose? Can you watch three three eleven turn into one fifty? Half of it gone. Well, how do you know when to when to do it? And when not? When do you, how do you know? Okay. When do you become a trader? At what point of skill are you considered a trader? Are you a trader back here at monthly because you just decided okay I think that's the top because of this divergence. I'm going to put in my order, and I'm going to walk away and, and uh, put a trailing stop of a jillion pips, and I'm going to, I'll look back in a year. Would you have been happy? Yeah. Okay, does that make you a trader? Does that classify you as a trader? I don't know. Now let's go back, and let's look at the daily again. And then let's look at this, at this right here. Now... Let's drop it down. Let's look at four hour. Stick with me here. There's a purpose here. I want to. I want to say now. Look at four hour. Does that does that look like a strong trend? Those of you guys that are starting out on four hour, does this look like something you can manage if you don't really know what you're doing? I I just ask you. Look at, look at the support and resistance areas, the flips. Bar lows, bar lows, bar highs. Okay, let's see, let's see if this area is a big round number. To get the lower numbers, it's hard to catch them sometimes. 67.50, okay. Was there any bar confirmations here? If you had a bar confirmation and it got you down where your bar lows were, do you hang on? Do you, do you enter off your bar confirmation? Watch your profit go to 50, 60, and find trouble where you would suspect? And then do you watch it go to zero? If you took your profit here, does that make you a trader and you didn't and you went back to zero? Does that mean you're not a trader? What defines you as a trader? Okay. What defines you? Now let's look at one hour. What about this? A lot of y'all try this. Let's go find let's go find a real steep four. Here, well, we're in one. Okay, there's the steep four. Now let's look at the one. Okay. Does this look easy? If you don't have a, a general idea of an entry method, support and resistance, common sense plan, a method. Now let's go where most of you are. Let's go to 15 minute. What about this? OK, 
Okay, so you've got seconds to make a decision. You have seconds to make a decision. Okay? Literally, you have seconds. The, the, difference, the difference is do with the time frames is they get progressively harder. Okay, so so what is a trader? Well, would a trader be, would, would it matter to you if you were considered a good trader because you could trade a monthly chart and have your account grow uh, at 5% or 10% a month? Would, that, would you be uh, satisfied to, to call yourself a trader? Do, do you feel like you have to be able to day trade all day on a 15-minute chart to be able to be considered a trader? Well, what I think is this. I think that people think that this looks easy, and in fact, the truth of the matter is, when you're going monthly to four hour, it gets, jumps away from you, doesn't it? Where did I do with it? There we go. When you, when you think you're doing something, you're actually not. This is why trading is hard. This is why trading is hard. Because people get too mental. No discipline. No plan. Look, the account is too small. I've got to make too many good move, good trades to build the account, that, that one move, that one move here will do it, but I don't have the ability to watch these bars cover themselves over and over and over, okay? One move down, the next bar totally covers it. One move down covers that bar. Next bar totally covers it on a weekly. That's weekly. And it does it even more so as you go lower in time frame. So so what what is the what is the way to conquer this? How do we conquer this? Well, would it make sense to you if I said that if you could get to a point where you could trade profitably in this environment, if this environment, if this market environment, side to side, uh, a consolidation, which is what price does virtually all the time. It, this is what it does. It doesn't do this very often. And remember what I just showed you. This right here is a is is deception because when you go down in time frame, this is not reality. This is really most of this is this on a lower time frame. <laughs> go prove that to yourself over and over again. Go find go find a a one hour chart that you see this and then go to a five minute chart and look for yourself and see that what you thought was one thing in reality was another. Okay, so, so the question becomes, how do, if we can get good, if we can learn to trade in this environment, which is really visually trade in this environment, then if we can do that, then this, even though it is this environment in a shorter time frame, this should be an easier process for us, right? So that's where I was all those years ago. Small account, 
trying my best <clears throat> to to uh, use the leverage and uh, it just it just is it's hard, isn't it? It's just hard. Okay, can 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 uh, can can we learn to catch these? And either ride the, t the trend line or ride a, an EMA that you like. This is a 25. Some people might ride a, um, a 10. It's up to them. 10 would be a little bit closer. Okay. Some people will even ride a 60. I've said for years that I teach experience. And that I've said for years that people have taken what I've given them and taught them and have applied it to their own experience and their own market methods and abilities and and done wonderful things with learning um, how to interpret price like I do. Side to side, market interpretation combined with big round numbers, price flips, and a trend line and whatever else you want to put with it and then bar confirmations okay so so uh, so the next thing is can we get good at this can we get good at making a profit consistently in this market environment and the answer to that is oftentimes when we get good at this at what I teach and what I do oftentimes and this will shock you new people Oftentimes, this becomes more easy than this. It really does. Because price is showing itself over and over again. What it's likely to do. And we know. We know where that point is. And we know that there are times we're going to get our bar confirmations. As an example here, we have side to side market consolidation, correct? Okay, and it's roughly, it's a weekly chart, it's Euro USD, it's roughly 430 something pips. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's get us our big round number. Make sure I practice what I preach. I'm blind. I have to look. Okay. So 34. We could go with several things here. Okay. Here's the 3,400 area. Let's do that. And then the 3,900. All right. So bar highs, old resistance comes through, comes back. Sometimes it holds. To the pip, sometimes it doesn't. Takes it a couple of bars, but it does. Turns into new support. In the meantime, this has created up with some bar highs up here. Okay, so when you see this going here, when you see this area broken, you know that that the markets tend to go side. So there's no there's no question here that there's a good chance that that market's going to start doing this. So so what happens? Well, we get a two-week pin bar. For you new folks, pin bars uh, were coined by Martin Pring, and I use them a little differently than him. And once again, I give credit where it's due. And it's this bar and this bar combined. Combining these two bars doesn't always happen this way. Sometimes it's just one bar. We'll look at that. Okay. A two-day, a two-week pin bar. Okay, now, all right, so we have this we have this form here, and in the where is price going series method thing, training method, we do a simple method where we just play a break of the top of the bar. But obviously, that is not the only way that we can do things in a manner that that makes it uh, more easily manageable. Uh, lower stop 
And these are just things we have to learn. We have to practice to get good at. So the Where is Price Going training method series is something that you do to learn, to get confidence that if you find your, your, your bar setups in good places, that the odds of them doing what you think they're going to do more often than not occur. So, so what would be, if we were doing... If we were doing the where is price going series and there was nothing right of this chart from here over, this is where we were at to the left of this line. Where would be your areas that, that mark the market is likely to do stuff? Okay. Well, first of all, we would suspect that something might happen at the 3650 area. Bar high right here. Bar low. Okay, it's a price flip. 3650. All right, that would be a thought. Another thought would be this bar high right here, which happens to be at the big round number of 3600. Okay, let me get rid of a few so you don't get confused. Or let me point them out. The top of the two week pin bar is this line right here. Okay, and in the series, to make it easy, we play breaks of that, and we, and we try to predict where price is going to run. The initial stop, we say, is that it will, it will reach our initial target uh, guess, if you want to use that term. It will do that before it breaks the backside of the bar. Okay, so if we were doing this, what would be our first initial guess? Well, our first initial guess would be this bar high right here at the 3600 level. Now, look what happens. Price may or may not have broken. Here's the bar that breaks the top of the pin bar, okay? Some of you would have been in. Some of you would not. Some of you, it just depends on you. It's one of those situations. It's a great learning situation right here. But if you're just playing the break and let's see where it goes thing, okay, so you're in. So look what happens. Look at the drawdown you get. Okay, you're in, and you're down 60 pips. Okay, so what was your initial risk on, on your trade? Well, once again, the Where is Price Going series is not necessarily about risk and reward calculations. It's about getting good at understanding price and what it's going to do once you get good at identifying market action, and it's not hard to learn. Okay, so it eventually reached this area, no problem. Okay, but now look what happened. The next bar, it gets to where you wanted it to go, and it draws you down again. Okay, so if you were in this in a live trade, are you a trader? Are you, are you a trader? I, I don't mean to be sarcastic. I'm, I'm trying to get you to think. Are you a trader? Uh, are you trading an account? First of all, if this would have happened to me, the trend line's already on here. Okay? We're going to get to a smaller time frame and look at it in a second. But what kind of a trader are you? Are you the trader where your account is big enough that this guess to this point has made you 50 pips. Okay, now let's go back to our, our account. Remember, you were going to write down on your paper you had a $50,000 account. Okay, let's say that let's say that when you entered this that you had made the decision that these bar lows, let me get rid of this. These bar lows were going to be your stop. Okay? So on a break of this bar, when you entered, you were going to you were going to use all of this old bar lows as support, you were going to use that as your initial stop. 
Okay, so that gave you an initial stop of roughly, let's say, 70 pips. Okay, so that would have given you 50,000, follow along, 50,000 times 3% is 1,500 divided by your 70 is $21. Let's just round it off, $22 a pip. Okay, so you, you get from here to here, we guessed with our market action that price, its first target was going to reach the 3,600 area at this bar high, which it did. Okay, so that's 50 times 22. That's $1,100 that you're going to look down and you're going to see roughly $1,000 profit up. Okay, so that is, that's about a 2% return on your account in a week, two weeks. Okay, so are, are you a trader? What kind of a trader are you? Are you going to move your stop to break even? Are you going to take that? off the table? Or are you going to start following your, your stop underneath the trend line? Are you going to go for that next target? What would be our next target? Remember? Right here. Okay. Now look what happened. It took off. It, did, it made our target. But look what it did. Look at the drawdown. Okay. So all this time that you're, you're, being, tr you're being Mr. Trader, you made money. You watched it fall, all go away. You made money, more money. You watched it all go away. You finally made it here to 100 pips. Okay? You made money. How much would that have been? That would have been about 4% or 2,000. Okay? All right, so, so, all right, what kind of a trader are you? Is is this going to be is this going to be the move that's going to follow this trend line all the way up, and it's and it's going to make you a uh, uh, fifty percent return on your investment here in in uh, uh, five to ten weeks? I don't know. Let's look at one. Let's look at something. Let's go over. Let's leave the two at the top and the bottom. Let's leave the trend line. Let's go to daily. Let's see what this looks like. Actually, let's do this to make sure we know exactly where we're at. Let's put a line here on the break. This was the break bar, remember? This was the break bar. And let's put a line at the top of the break if we're doing the series. And let's change the color of this so we know. Let's change it to uh, dark blue. Okay. All right. So here's the arrow pointing at the at where price pulled back at this old strong uh, resistance that turned in support. All right, now let's do this and let's look and see what happened on daily. Okay, here we go. All right, here is our pin bar roughly. Okay, here is our break. This line represents the start of when the break was going to happen. That during that time frame, it was going to happen. Okay, and here is the pullback to that area. Let's look again. I want you to be confused. See? Okay. Here's the pullback. All right, now. 
let's get our 25 back on here like I like. I should have left it there. Okay. Now we have the weekly we have the weekly setup and we come back to daily. And now what is it? Now what is it doing? Well, it's a little bit more side to side, isn't it? It's a little bit it's a little bit more difficult to to uh, sit on our hands and uh, at least on a weekly, you know, we've got we got a general amount of time to sit and watch what's going on. Okay, so here we go, and here's where the bottom is at 3,400. So, are we? Do we see any? Do we see any bar confirmations that would have given us any heads up? on the break and what it was going to do if it was going to be a sustained break. Okay, so here's our break. All right, here, here's roughly where our first target was on weekly. All right, and here was our break area. All right, so it broke, it's in. Now, here's our, here's our price action, you know, trying to get to this point. Hold on. We're going to do this in other examples. Okay, here's our price action trying to get to our first target. So if you jump over on daily and you're trying to find or you're trying to watch it, then this is what you're watching. You're watching price break and you're watching it move into profit. And you're watching it move back out of profit on its way to reaching your first target, which it finally does right here. Okay? Now, notice the two-day pin bar right here that occurred. Okay? So, should you have chosen to, you didn't necessarily have to take the first break of the pin bar. You could have waited for a daily confirmation that would have given you a little bit better chance at an idea of what was coming and a little bit smaller stop should you have chosen to do it. And now we're following a trend line and we have the, the EMA and we now can see daily support and resistance flips that we wouldn't see on the weekly. Follow me? Set the blue line. Let's just leave it there. Let's change it to white. Stick with me. We're going to do another one. This is easy. What I'm trying to get to you here is, folks, is that you can, you can read a market and refine it and get and and accomplish your goals, and do it in a, in a, with a method and a in a way of intelligently reaching your goals, and knowing what price is going to do, and finding the absolute best place to enter with the absolute most confidence it's going to do what you think it's going to do. Okay, so here we have the trend line, and we get, although it's in a strange area, I understand, we get a two-day pin bar. And what does that say to you? Well, what it says to me is that this happens to be poking right up at the top of some resistance, okay, some old resistance. All right, it also says to me that it got a really good pullback to these bar lows. So if I'm a certain kind of trader, I might see this and I might go look at 4-hour and see what it's doing right here. But regardless, and we'll do that in a minute, regardless, this gave you, gave you a heads up that, okay, maybe we're fixing to get a pop, okay? 
maybe we're fixing to get that move to our first target area right here. And sure enough, we did. <clears throat> now, what would you suspect price to do when it got there? If you're a trader, what would you expect price to do? Well, it did exactly what I would have thought it would have done. It popped right back down to that old resistance and turned into support. And and once again, not to be not to sound condescending or sarcastic, I'm trying to get you to think. What kind of trader are you? Are you the are you the trader that that took the break? Or are you the trader that traded the pullback? Which trader are you? Okay. So let's do this. Let's jump over here and let's put that line there and let's see what happened there on four hour for the fun of it. Okay. Let's just see what happened. First of all, we notice the price is getting more and more sideways, isn't it? All right. Here's our four hour. Here's our here's our area. Here's our break. Here's our break on four hour of that area. Okay, let's step back and look at it. Daily. Let's go back and look at weekly. Oops. Here's our weekly setup. Okay, we're, we're watching this happen. We've, we've, we've kind of looked at this to start. We've moved over to daily. Okay, we've looked at that. Okay, after the weekly, we've, we've watched it pull back. We've watched price on a daily. It's formed a two-day pin bar. It's, it's, we've, we've got clearly defined resistance. We've got our first target area that we suspected that price would reach when it broke the weekly. Okay. Now we've now we've we've waited instead of just taking the, the, the weekly on its own, which is what we're gonna do as part of the process, but we're also gonna do what we're doing now as part of the process of becoming traders. Okay, so so now we have this and now we we're either going to be the kind of trader that looks for a pullback here, possibly finds himself an entry here. Okay. Or are we the kind of trader that, that trades the breakout? If we did, we we accomplished this. Okay. There it is. There it is. Are we the trader that likes to trade the pullback? Okay. And the truth of the matter is, is that you can't limit yourself to one or the other. You've got to learn what's the best with experience. So let's look, let's put these arrows here and let's see what happened on four hour based on each one of these areas. And you can do this on your own charts forever and ever and get really good. Okay. Let's zoom in. Four hour. All right. So here was our break. Finally. Now look what happened. Price pulled back. So you're in the drawdown. Okay. And you're back to the trend line. But here was our target area. I can tell you that. Where, where tell you that now. So, so what happened here? Well, if I'm just looking at four hour, let's just let's have a little fun with this. Obviously, we're working this uh, weekly pin bar to the top. But while we're doing that, let's have a little fun and let's let's look and see what what four hour is doing. You you see all the resistance. 
we, we already know about all that. See the four-hour pin bar? What's it likely to do? I wonder if there's a, a, a number there. Let's see. I don't really know. Let's see if we can find something. Well, here is the 3600. Now it's above that. Let's come down here. Where it becomes a little more difficult. Okay, so not, not a real big round number right here, 3580. But nonetheless, do you see, if I put that line there, do you see the bar highs? Do you see the bar lows? Do you see the pin bar? And do you see price lining up after it? Like there's going to be a breakout. If it does break out, what, where is it likely to go? This bar low? would be my first suspect, and then these right here would be next. And so look where it went, and then look where it pulled back. And I'm not even going to sit here and talk to you. What do you, what do y'all think this is? These two bars. What do y'all think these two bars are? Well, if you add them up on a four, it's an eight hour pin bar, okay? So would you, if you traded that, would you trade that long into this? Not unless you damn sure knew what you were doing. Would it, would it eventually have uh, made it up here? Yeah, which it often does. But once again, just pointing it out to you. All right, so does this, does this eventually make it? Yes. So just having a little fun in here looking at this while we're doing this. But let's get back to what we were doing. We went to 4-hour. Here was our break here. Price came back. And look what it formed here. Same thing, right? It's just going in the other direction. We're just watching price do its thing, okay? If It's another eight-hour pin bar, okay? So you're just watching this. You don't care what it's, what it's forming. You just, you know what it is. That's basically all it is. You, you know what it is. Okay, if it breaks, where is it going? Well, this bar low and trend line, and that's where it went. But then look what happens on the four-hour. A big bearish, or excuse me, bullish outside bar, okay? There you get it. And then we get the pullback. Okay, pullback. And there it is. Okay, and then price runs off. Okay. So, so what did we just do here? Well, what we just did was we took a, a weekly setup that we can practice in a myriad of ways to get good at trading, consolidation, and side-to-side -side market action. Because when the day comes, when we can do this, then the day that this happens, we will know what to do, and we will know how to stay in it, and something really amazing will happen to you. And I can say this from experience. Let me tell you what will happen to you. You will, you will get to where you enjoy this. <clears throat> you will get to where you enjoy this more than this. You'll just have to trust me on that. Okay? Because trading this... Is really not that hard once you learn that price does things in boxes. Okay, price boxes itself. You see Mike talk about it all the time. Okay, a box, a box, a box, a box, big run, box, box. Okay, and what separates these boxes generally tend to be big round numbers. Okay, big round numbers and with them a means of support and resistance to trail your stops. But the question becomes, as it always will, 
question will always be, here's the 2500 level, here's the 2900 level, bar lows, bar highs, bar lows, bar highs. The question will always be, can I watch a $320 pip move turn into zero because I have all this faith that this is going to hold and continue because, because my faith tells me it's going way down here for 3,000 pips and I'm going to double my account. And people do it all the time. I'm fully aware. Out of pure blind luck. Probably the worst thing that can happen to a new trader. Get lucky to start. So, let's go, and this is going to be a long video, I know, but um, actually, let's wrap this one up, and then we'll start a new video and look at another example just like it. Let's finish this up by saying that what you need to do is this if you have never been able to go six months in a row whether you trade three times a month or 30 times a month whether you trade a weekly time frame or you trade a 15 minute time frame if you've never been able to go six months in a row without a losing month then you're not a trader. And I can help you get to six months in a row. And at least I will consider you a trader. And to a lot of people, uh, my opinion means a little. And we can do this together. And it's simple. And if you will work this training on several fronts, not only from a monthly and a weekly and not paying attention to anything else, and then separately, we will do daily and four hour separately so that you can learn to see the inherent differences and difficulties in lower time frames. We'll do this together. And we will reach that six months, and then we will open that live trade account. Then, you know, and obviously some of y'all are going to do this differently. I understand it. Not, not all of you are going to follow me to the T. I understand that. But at the very least, stick with the plan with me on what we're doing and how we're doing it. Okay? So let's walk through a complete uh, separate screen. And we'll do a monthly and move down. And we might even do start with a four hour and move down through a five minute. 